We've made it to a new lesson, lesson 13. We're going to be finding the base of a percent problem. This is lesson 13a. And lesson, thir uh, lesson 12 is going to be linked in this description with other helpful videos in case you need them. So this is the triangle we used in all the lesson 12 videos. Our percent triangle can help us find a base. We just cover it to see what we need to use. Whatever's missing, that's the part we cover. So we, we can do part divided by rate. See? 8% of what number is 150? We convert the 8% to a decimal. We learned how to do that. Two hops over and put a zero as a placeholder. And we just divide, part divided by rate. 150 divided by 0.08. It's going to equal 1,875. You can do that quickly on your calculator. If you're doing it on paper, we learned how to do that in video 9b. We can also use a proportion. We learned that in video 11f. We set it up so that this is the part, this is the base of the whole, that's the percentage, and we write it over 100. We multiply 150 times 100, we get 15,000, and we divide it by the number that's remaining over this 8, the leftover third number. 15,000 divided by 8 is 1,875, just like we got up here. So either way you do it, it's going to give you the right answer, okay? In video 12b, we saw that the larger number isn't always the base. If the rate is more than 100%, the part will be larger than the base. So 200% is more than 100%, isn't it? And 200% of some number is 28. That means that that is going to be a smaller number than the part because our percentage is more than 100%. We do 28 divided by 2. We don't need that point zero, do we? When we move the decimal place over to turn this into a decimal, it's just a 2. We get a 14. On a calculator, if you don't move the decimal, you can just do 2, 8, division sign, 2, 0, 0, shift equals, and it'll give you the 14. Or, if you did move the decimal, and you know 200% is just a 2, you can just do 2, 8 divided by 2 equals, okay? The shift equals is when you're just putting 200 in as a percentage, all right? 16% of what number is 480? We turn this into a decimal, hop, hop, put the decimal point, get rid of the percentage sign, and do 480 divided by 0.16. Quickly on a calculator, we get 3,000. As a proportion, we can solve it doing the 480 as the part, the 16 as the percent, and we're looking for the base here. We do 480 times 100 cross multiplying down here. We get 48,000. We divide it by the third number, the 16, and we get 3,000. Same answer. So it can be answered either this way by dividing the and doing part divided by rate, or we can do it this way as a proportion. Okay? Now we've got 80% of the regular price is $675. What is the regular price? Well, the regular price is the original amount. That's the base, right? It's the original total. We turn this into a decimal, and that zero is not really needed on the back side of this 8, is it? If we move the decimal up here, we just have a 0.8. So that'll make it easier for us. And then we do the part divided by the rate, 675 divided by 0.8. We get $843.75. As a proportion, we don't need the dollar signs until the end. We could do 675 times 100, which is 67,500. We divide it by the 80 and get 843.75. But we have to remember that this is talking about prices. We have to remember that dollar sign. Okay. 2,640 is 66 and two thirds percent of what number? And we learn how to turn this into a decimal in video 11b, all right? So there's links to that too. Now, look at how this is written. It says 2,640 is 66 and two-thirds percent of what number? And over here it says 16 percent of what number is 480. It's asking the same thing. It's just written differently, okay? It still wants the base. It still wants that other number. So it's really important to be able to identify these, okay? We turn the 66 and two-thirds percent into a decimal or a fraction, and in this case, it's actually easier to use it as a fraction. To do 2,640 divided by two-thirds, that division sign, 
we learned turns into multiplication. That's what the parentheses next to it means. And we flip this around to its reciprocal of 3 halves. Now we can either multiply straight across 2,640 times 3, 1 times 2 is 2, and then have to reduce that, or we could cross cancel. We can say there's 1, 2 here, and there's 1,322's up here. See? So this cancels out as a 1,320. This cancels out as a 1. Now when we multiply straight across, we don't have to reduce. We get 3,960 over 1 times 1 is 1, which reduces to 3,960. Now this is really, really important. You need to memorize that 1 third is 0.33 with that continuing 3. So we put the bar over it, or as a percentage, it's 33 and a third percent. 2 thirds would be 0 0.66, which would be 66 and 2 thirds percent. If you can memorize these or write these down in your notes right now, but try to learn them and memorize them, so when you take the test, you'll go quicker, okay? If we had 99, well, 99 can be split into three parts evenly with three equal parts. But because it's based off of 100, that one extra one between 99 and 100 is what throws us off and makes us three. It makes this three keep repeating, and it makes us have a third with the percentage. See? You can't evenly split 100. There's always going to be a little piece left over, okay? And because these are thirds, that's why it does that, all right? So memorizing these two are going to help you a lot. All right. In your skill focus, there is a table similar to this. So I'm going to show you what they expect of you. Here we have some customer service transactions, and our products are a coffee maker and a toaster. And the coffee maker had four returns. Those four returns were 8% of the total sales. The toaster had six returns, which was 6 and 1 fourth percent of the total sales. Our first question is, how many coffee makers were sold? Well, if four were returned, and that's 8% of the sales, we do turning this 8% into a decimal. So we get 0 0.08, because we moved it over two hops and got rid of the percentage sign. And then we do the part divided by the rate. We do the four divided by 0 0.08, and we get a 50. So we know there were 50 sold, four returned. Okay. How many of the toasters that were sold were not returned? Okay, this is basically asking the same thing as this, except it's got an extra part. So if we stop it right here, all right, and just look at this first part of the question, how many of the toasters that were sold? Well, then let's do what we did for the coffee makers. We've got six returns, and that's a total of six and one-fourth percent of the sales. We turn this into a decimal. One-fourth is 0.25. And we don't see the decimal in between the 6 and the 1 fourth fraction, but it's there. It's invisible. We're going to move it one, two hops over. So we have a 0 0.0625. See? We don't put another decimal point. It's just 0 0.0625 for 6 and 1 fourth, okay, percent. Now we do the 6 divided by that 0 0.0625, that part divided by the rate, we get 96 were the totals that were sold. So how many of the toasters that were sold, the 96, now we can finish the question, were not returned? So how many of the 96 were not returned? Well, we know there were six returns, so we do the 96 minus 6, and we get 90 were not returned. See? So I split this so that I could do two parts of the problem. See? Next question says, what percent of the coffee makers were not returned? Now, you have to be careful. It says, what percent? We have to make sure we're answering exactly what it's asking. So we might look at this and say, well, we know there were, four, there were 50 coffee makers sold, and there were four returns, so there was 46 not returned. But that's not what it's asking. It's asking for a percentage. If we look at 100% as all the coffee makers sold, 8% were returned. We just subtract the 8% from the 100%. That's 92%. See? It's a lot easier than it really looks, isn't it? We're just taking the 8% away from the 100% that were sold. Now look at this one. It says, what percent of the toasters were not returned? 
Well, we know six and one fourth percent were returned. If we use the 100% as all of the coffee makers sold, we need to subtract six and one fourth percent. Turning this into a decimal is going to help us. We already know what this is as a decimal. We did it up here. It's 0 0.0625. 100% is one whole, isn't it? So we would have to add a decimal place and some zeros in order to subtract 0 0.0625. Quickly on a calculator, we get 0.9375. And because it's asking for a percent, we move that point from here two hops to the right and get 93.75. Now we can put on the percent sign. We can also write it as 93 and 3 fourths percent because 7, 0.75 is 3 fourths, isn't it? So we have 93 and 3 fourths percent were not returned, okay? If you have to watch this video a couple times, it's no big deal if it's going to help you, okay? Another 10, 12 minutes of your life to really learn something is not a big deal. If you're really going crazy and you feel like her, take a break. Take a five, 10 minute break. Go have a cup of coffee or eat a sandwich. Go for a walk and then come back and watch the video again, okay? So that your brain can mull it over. So now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 145, and I hope you do well. I hope I explain this well enough. What you really need to be able to do is identify the part, the base, and the rate. And we talked about that in 12A. There'll be a link to that. If you can identify the part, the base, and the rate, it's going to make your life a lot easier. You'll be able to say, okay, I need to find the part, so I'm covering it. I'm going to do base times rate. I know which one the part is. I need to find the base, so I'm going to do part divided by rate. And if you can identify in the problem which one is the part, which one is the base, which one is the rate, it's really going to make your life easy, okay? I know I helped with the colors, but now you need to identify them on your own. Our next video is going to be about solving interest problems. It's Lesson 13B. We're going to get into bank loans and interest rates and stuff like that. If you need more help, there's going to be a link to that grade 6 uh, cross-canceling video that will help you... Uh, cross cancel to do the multiplication quicker without having to reduce so much. Okay, so I have a link to doing that, but you should not do that by now. And then the grade seven percent problem videos and the algebra one percentage videos. Okay, and then all those lesson twelves and the one for dividing decimals nine b and eleven b for turning. A percentage into a decimal. I'll have all of those links in this description, all right? But really, you should have watched them by now, and sometimes it helps to watch a video a couple times to let it sink in, all right? I'm really proud of you. I know this stuff can be mind-boggling, but if you keep moving slowly, slowly, and when you get in trouble, just re retreat, regroup, and then attack again, you'll be okay, all right? I'll see you next video. Have a great day. Bye.